the things you thinking thinking I'm doing, I'm not doing <laughs> with my coach, uh, Hall of Famer coach Joe Goose. And I'm not just <laughs> no, who's doing it. You're gonna be guessing. You're gonna be guessing. Right, listen, show us one more time. Uh -huh. <laughs> Slow ass punches. It's like Meek Mill. <laughs> oh, that was bad. Can't start this episode without toasting to another amazing season on the shop, making incredible moments and having amazing conversations. So cheers, cheers, brother. Did you play both ways in high school? Yeah, I play uh, corner and, and I play receiver. I was supposed to play corner, but I at Maryland. It was, Did you nah, come I was recruited for just receiver. I only had three schools to play corner and guess the schools right now. I bet you can't guess. Wait, wait, wait. You, the three schools that recruited you to play corner. Obviously, what Maryland were you in? Mm -hmm. All receiver. Alabama. Al wow. Wow. Miami. And Clemson. So you you thought about going to play corner? Clemson. I wanted to go to Clemson, but I was like, I wanted to play receiver, then I wanted to play. I was kind of up in the air, but then like Clemson had Sammy, DeAndre Hopkins, Martavis Bryant. Martavis Bryant. They really had their first three that was all damn near first round talent. Yeah, because you you from Maryland. Maryland. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not your senior year in high school. When you're, th when you're deciding if you're gonna play corner or wide out, are you thinking pros or are you yeah. just like, I just wanna Oh, I thought about going to the league before I got to high school. I was like, man, this is what I wanna do. You know what I'm saying? Something gotta take the back seat and it was like school, but then I, I went to a private school and so it was hard as shit. And I was like, man. Yeah, it's crazy, cause I had the same <laughs> <laughs> I said the same thing, but you it's the same thing. Brother. <laughs> but it's crazy, your brother did the opposite. Yes. His, br his brother went to school to play receiver mm -hmm. and now play they switched him to corner. Yeah, Nick Saban switched him his junior year. He wanted to play junior. receiver. His yeah. junior year, he switched Or his sophomore year, like going on his sophomore year wow. or his junior year, he started playing DB, but still that receiver. So my brother really got a hell of a story. He really kind of played both ways at Alabama. And then he started playing corner. Well, because his well. freshman and sophomore year, he played receiver. Mm -hmm. And they slowly transitioned him to corner. His he played year. corner. One of the dopest things I saw was Yon the Pro Bowl, man. Oh, my God. What was that like, man? I think it's kind of surreal, too, to a certain extent, because it's like, that doesn't happen. Both of us play, like, one of those positions that compete at a high level. My brother's nice. Like, my brother ain't no, like, average Joe. No, he all pro, so I kinda, yeah. I'll be on his ass about big that. I'm big. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm like this. I'm like this. You did good for yourself. You know what I'm saying? And this will be the first year y'all play each other. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Is what's, he, that, what's that's what's on schedule right now? Do he, he, want, he want to go one-on-one -on -one with you? Yeah, he been wanting to go one-on-one. -on -one I know, so I, I don't want that wow. so bad. Because he know all your moves from day one. That's what he think, though. I kept a couple up my sleeve. Oh, I had to keep a couple up my sleeve, though. I, I had to. Case days like this, a rainy day, see your own sibling. You know, he does. He does. He watched me close. He studied me. He knew me well. Yeah, because I, I was reading your father, your pops died yeah. early. So you was like, that's why you went to Maryland, right? Yeah, to stay, stay close home to home. Him. Yeah. So you kind of helped. You were like big brother, but also kind of everything to him, right? 100%. That's my man. I had to tighten him up a couple times, though, too. Like, Did you? you know saying? Yeah, we, uh, he like tried me one time. Like, How uh, old was he? Coming to his own, I think he was in high school. You know, you get high school. Smelling you got, yourself. Yeah, yeah, you got a little emotion. You having your stuff together. He was like, uh, he had said something slick to me, like, da 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 like, you know, call me on my name. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's so all right. Like, but wait, before this, he was always little bro, respectful. Ain't never tried me, but I said, all right, listen, what I'm going to do. You know, I'm old school. I waited like two weeks, you know what I'm saying? He thinks he thinks should die down. <laughs> I'm still mad. Yeah, I, said, yeah, yeah. I said, I'm going to see him. So I drove up there. I was I was waiting in the cut. Like, my car got my tents, you know what I'm saying? Everything dark. So uh, my mom pulled up to the house. I watched him pull up the house. They don't even see me. So I was, I turned my car and zzz, in the front. I pulled up in the front. My brother was like, my brother was like shocked a little bit. Like, they was taking groceries in the house. So uh, I hop out the car. I was like, what was all that you was talking about, Holmes? And my mom was like, my mom like gave you that eye, like the mom like like this, like she gonna she gonna bond her she, business. She gonna look the other way on this. Yeah, so I, so I popped him. I straight oh, you, popped him. You, oh oh shit! He, he didn't see it coming. He took off. He took off, and I had a boot on at the time. Wait wait, you you got a you hurt? 
Yeah, I had broke my ankle in college. Oh, I, was I was crippled. I was crippled. I wanted to see about that. Yeah, I wanted to see about that. My little brother tried me, but oh, you know what I'm But that was some family, like real, real That's that like, shit. Yeah, that's that family yeah. shit. Like and that. He ain't never tried me again. That's my. That's my. By the way, who sport. faster? I'm faster than him. He'll argue with you, but check the tape. That's a different demeanor, boy. You don't care. You really don't care about nothing at that point. Nah, when you, nah. When you're in the boot fight. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you, you, what's wrong with you? I don't know. I'm a little off. Okay. <laughs> you gotta be a little off to play football. You gotta be a little off. But by the way, your sports, you gotta oh, be a little yeah. fucking you off, too. Crazy, yeah, you gotta yeah. be thrown off. Huh? Yeah, yeah. You gotta be crazy. Do you know you're off? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. You gotta be a little bit off. To there, yeah, to pour to to a little bit, get punched in the face? Punch in or the to face. punch somebody else. A punch somebody else in the face. Yeah. And then cut the weight. Yeah, exactly. The weight cut. What you fight at? 35. And what you walk, like, what you walk around? 150, 152. 150. Yeah. That's a lot of weight. Yeah. How do you lose that much weight? You just got to do you gotta suits. You got to do, you know, you can't, you can't eat. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of sacrifices you got to do. You got to go deep into to yourself and just know that, you're okay to die. That's what you gotta think. Like I'm okay. I'm so gonna make you're, this you're way. You okay with the whip? <laughs> <laughs> like you have to think that. Like you just gotta be okay with it. Is that in the contract? No. Yeah, you gotta. <laughs> you gotta be ready to die. Right? This, this is what you like. No, this ain't what I'm saying. Huh? <laughs> I thought we was just playing. I thought we were just fighting. <laughs> yeah, <I> just, <laughs> no, it's real life though. It's a, that's the scariest part. I feel like for boxing for me. At what least. age were you when you realized it? Because as a kid, you just having fun. Doing yeah. it. Now you're a pro. I think I knew I was going to box since I was, like, nine. I, I I just felt like I was good at it, and I just never never, never had a doubt in my mind that I was going to become something, like, in, in fighting, at least. And then uh, it got real when I was 15, and, I, and then I just dropped out of school, like, ninth grade, I think. And I just, my family was behind me. Everybody thought I could do it. And then I turned pro at 17 because I couldn't go to the Olympics. They changed the age groups from... 17 to 19. So I made the Olympic team. Then they changed the age groups, and I was like, ah. And they took off the headgear. So I was like, I'm going to fight for four more years without a headgear. I'm not going to get paid. I was like, I'm going to go pro. Fuck that. I'm going to get paid. Yeah. But I'm going to get hit. I'm going to get I love paid. that. Are you yeah. finna die. You might well go and get that money. Both of y'all in a sport where you have to be OK with getting hit. Yeah. You never like that shit, right? You yeah, never... you don't want to get hit hard, no. But are there guys out there, Stefan, who are like, they actually like, I want, because some linebackers be like, oh, hit me. No, listen, it's it's periods where like you go in phases of you wanting contact when the first, when the season first start or something like that, when you built up enough armor, you've been working out, like damn, like I'm gonna lay, I'm gonna lay some, I'm gonna lay some lumber on somebody. But me, I try to avoid it at all costs just because like I play a position that yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't be getting hit on. Yeah, you're the hunter. Uh, you get hunted. You see a guy like Adrian Peterson, we all know Adrian Peterson, one of the great Go to. I played on his team, right? So he was one of those people that just like. He had to be a little off. He was bald headed. You know, bald headed people usually be like those kind of people. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, when they so, get their hair, they don't care about that. You see what I'm saying? They're bald headed yeah. like. They've accepted yeah, all yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get rid of it. He man. used to punish people. Like, I got, it's plenty of tape out there. You can just watch his highlights. Like, it'll be him and a DB. And typically, a running back save my body, I'm gonna step out of bounds. And everybody tackle him low. So they was diving at his legs, and he'll just like dive like low and put all his. He wants to come. Some people like, like that. It's crazy. You like, like need it. I low key, it's like a drug. Like if you, if you start to love contact, it's like you can't live without it. But I, I look at you and I say all of this respectfully. You're like, you're yeah. like six foot nothing, a hundred nothing pounds. You're a beast. You're a fucking monster on the field. Like where's your edge? Like what's your where's like where's your? I think competitive spirit, like more so. Like uh, I put a lot of time and a lot of time into my craft, and I watch myself. Like a lot of times, people get caught up in watching tape or watching somebody else. I like to watch myself so I can consistently be inconsistent with what I'm showing you. Like, I can't keep showing you the same thing. If I show you something, I'm gonna show you something different. And I wanna win, like, you know what I'm saying? I believe in myself, like, y'all can attest, if you believe in yourself, it kinda, it sound cliche, That's real. but I believe I'm that nigga. So like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't never didn't think anything else. So when I go in there, I go in with the mindset, I'm trying to dominate. You know? Is that what came through? Cause people obviously got pissed at you on the sideline at the playoffs. Yeah, hell yeah. Is that, that was what you were showing, right? Just like, but people, I, always, I yeah. always say like, playing football, you fucking running out there, getting hit. <laughs> of course it's gonna get a little testy yeah, sometimes. Yeah, 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 it get like, wild out there. You know how aggressive boxing is. You know, get real. <laughs> now like, football is like somewhat of a yeah. similar thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, for people who feel a way about it, I gotta put it in perspective for you. Like, our DeMar Hamlin situation. Like, when we kind of like, damn, they lost somebody on the field. That's how physical it is. That's how serious it is. So when people refer to it as a game, I like to say, like, I'm not out there playing. 
it's okay to show emotion like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's okay to be passionate. If I'd rather be passionate than somebody that's okay with losing, I ain't never going like that. Never, right? Never. Yeah. And you gotta you you seem like the one that rally everybody yeah, up too. Yeah, yeah. For sure. That's my thing. Because when watching the DeMar thing, obviously none of us knew what was going mm -hmm. on. And then it was like, are they gonna play again? I saw you trying to get everybody back yeah. together. What was that up? Because that was a hell of a roller coaster. I think it's like uh whatever relationship you have with death. Like I lost my father when I was real, real young. I've had experience with death with many of my family, my friends, and like I try to detach myself mentally to a certain extent. But in that situation, like, it was kind of in and out. It was so inconsistent. Like, he came to, he went. You know what I'm saying? You saw, nobody else saw, but we saw the, what's this called? The heart monitor. Heart monitor. Yes, flatline. The heart monitor. You saw, you it saw flatline? a flatline? Swear to God. Mm. Wow. Saw a flatline twice. Oh, my god. So gosh. the flatline, they shocked him. He came back, and everybody was like, it's, it's like a movie. It was such a moment of, like, I don't know. Like, it's hard and hard to describe because... It's inconsistent on how to feel. Like, you don't know if you want to play. It's a roller play. coaster, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, guys crying. And in that moment, like, I couldn't do anything but other than if I know DeMar Hamlin personally, which I do, like a little bro, get your guys ready to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, rally your guys behind them because if you didn't have something to play for, you got something to play for now. You know what I'm saying? And of course, they ended up ultimately ending the game, which was, you know what I'm saying, probably in the best interest. But in that moment, if we had to go back out there, I know DeMar would have wanted us to play, you know what I'm saying? Because when he came to finally, his first words was, did we win? Yeah, mm -hmm. get the And I was like, oh, yeah. I was like a little iffy. Like, I was like, damn, am I messed up for like wanting to try to get guys to play? Like, obviously some guys couldn't. But then when he woke up and said, did we win? It was like reassuring that. Validation. I know he that had a winning him. spirit. Yeah. I knew I knew, I knew my little bro would have wanted me to go bump with them, not, yeah. not go leave. I was thinking about something in a, in a way different spirit. You as a comedian, Desi, are there ever times you're gonna go on stage and you got life shit, right? You're not in a good mood, something's happened. Family. I ain't gotta worry about dying. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta go on stage and turn that thing on and be funny and make people laugh. Yeah. Like, how, how do you deal with that? Like, Well, I, I would say it's most definitely different from social media. You know, social media, you got takes, and you know, when come from shooting skits and stuff like that, I, if I mess up, oh, let me do this again. But on that stage, it's, you can't say, oh, let me do this joke over. You know what I'm saying? So with that, it's just me being, you know, a student of the game, and I study. I study myself, you know what I'm saying? I work on my jokes every day. I watch the greats, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and it, it, it's always been a part of me, you know what I'm saying? Growing up, I, I used to watch the Eddie Murphys and the Martin Lawrence and, you know, um, working with the people like Mike Epps, you know, going on tour with them guys, you know, poured into me so much, you know what I'm saying? It helped me so much and, and let me know, you know, I'm, I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing right now. You know but I saying? couldn't believe you did it because to stand up, because stand up is fucking hard. And you know, you can die in the beginning stages. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hard, to your point, and it doesn't necessarily translate, meaning people don't understand it's different genre of comedy. It's still comedy, but a different style. Most definitely. Uh, I, and I would say my shows are totally different from my skits. Um, my skits are skits. But some people would be saying, that motherfucking show is 10 times better than this damn skits, because, you know, what my show is, you know, you, you're learning about me. You know what I'm saying? You're hearing about how I grew up. You know what I'm saying? You're hearing about what I done went through. You know, my, you're hearing about my mom, my, my grandmother. You know, you're hearing about just real You're talking about your per yeah, your my personal, personal life. life. But it's, it's, it's more mature, I would say. You Got know it. what I'm saying? Because your skits are characters yeah, yeah, yeah. and things, yes. You know what I'm saying? Is, so this, it, is there something you're prouder of? I'm very skits, proud. Stand up? Yeah, because which... it, it, to be honest, man, stand up allowed me to, like, find my real self. You know what I'm saying? Tap into my real self. Tap into that real gift. I want to relate to the people. I feel like if whatever I'm, whatever I'm going through in life, I feel like I feel like people is going through it as well. You know what I'm saying? Or if they're not going through it right now, they done been through it. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm on that stage, man, I'm just I'm, I'm just I'm free. You know free. what I'm saying? I'm, I'm away from everything. I'm just in that moment. And you're not afraid to share anything about yourself. Nothing. I'm uh, like this is it. In music for you, when you're writing, is it like kind of like? I remember, um, was it Jay that said, my heart is bleeding through the pen. Like, are you letting go of yourself? Like, uh, I let go of myself all the time, um, especially in music. But it's hard for me just being in the country genre because you kind of got to limit what you say. Why you say that? Uh, it's just, it's a different game. Like, I have a lot of songs that I write that I can't release, but that, that I just write and I and can say whatever. I, yeah, I record them. They're just on my phone as demos, but I'll never release them. And then... Like, I have a song that's the closest thing, or the furthest thing away that I can release. I released on my first album, it's called Learning. And it's talk about, like, the racism I went through growing up, uh, the child abuse, and all this. And that was, like, one of the first songs that I ever wrote when I got to Nashville. And that was, like, one of the main things that brought all my fans towards me, 
Um, not only me being different in country music and kind of opening doors for other people that are just white, but also just being vulnerable and, you know, letting people know I'm just real and I'm going to tell you how I am. And that's how I am on stage as well. Like, I don't try and... I'm super shy off stage, and then when I get on stage, I just, you know... Superstar. Yeah, I just, I just open up. My show's never the same. Uh, I'll say some of the same stuff sometimes, but I just, you never know what I'm going to say out. And then I start drinking and I just become a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> you know? so, do, so do I. Yeah. Do you drink before the show or just when you oh, get on stage? I have to, dude. If I don't, like, I'm... So by the time you get up there, you're a little salt, so... Oh, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything. Like, there is nothing. This is me by oh, myself. Shit. But let me ask you, you, you started this and obviously you identify as a country singer. I think you're just a dope. Artists. So talk to me about, like, do you feel like you're pigeonholed? Is that by design, like, the country music thing? I think you just make music, great music. Yeah, well, when I first... Well, country music is the first genre that I've learned about. Uh, Tim McGraw, was, uh, I like it, I love it. It was the first song I knew. I grew up on a dairy farm uh, from Georgia. And so, till I got to middle school, um, country music was all I ever knew. And then I started learning about Chris Brown and Usher when I got to middle school. <laughs> and that, you know, that yeah, was fire you also didn't know... You just thought you was a white Yeah, to yeah, a kid I didn't know. Until called you a nigga, you thought you was just a white <laughs> Yeah, kid. dude. It's real what? shit. I didn't know. I so that. I never met my dad. I didn't meet my dad till, uh I was 16. He called you and he so, called you a nigga? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said, come here, come here, bro. No, but uh, my, my brother was white, my little brother, my mom was white, my nana was white. Never met any of my blacks out of my family. Uh -huh. And then uh, in middle school, seventh grade, uh, there was these two brothers that came, that picking on, my nickname was Bones. I was like 130, five foot seven. And uh, he told me, he was like, move out of my seat. And I was like, nah, I ain't moving, I'm, I ain't moving. So we ended up getting into a scuffle and then he was like, move, nigga. And it didn't phase me because I didn't know what it meant. Yeah. So then I went home and asked my mom about it and she got pissed. And then my, it took my little brother to come and tell me that I was biracial. Really? Damn. And that's when I started asking about my dad. Wow. And then that's when that came up, and then I ended up meeting him when I was 16, when I was a freshman in high school. But it's like, that stuff's what infuriated me. And so now I like going and just telling stories. I, uh, I do a lot of stuff like the Boys and Girls Club. Yep. So I bring kids that are unfortunate and can't, you know, afford tickets or whatever, and I give them, like, you know, great seats and just tell them how I was raised and that they can do anything that they put their mind to, like you were saying earlier, uh, just as long as you believe in yourself. Country music isn't the most diverse. Yeah, well, coming in, it was it was tough, because I feel like, because I, I, if I don't know, I got started on Facebook just doing covers, but most of my comments <laughs> were, I thought he was about to rap, because I, I have wow. tattoos everywhere, yeah, you know, I have my hat on, so that's why a lot of people click the video because they thought I was about to rap. <laughs> yeah. and then, and then, they said, so we got a nigga Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what, what made me go viral. Now, I feel like it's a lot more diverse. We, you know, we got uh, Jimmy Allen that's in there, Mickey Guyton, uh, a lot more artists that are coming in, Willie Jones. And it's so cool, because I feel like I'm, I was part of that door that's so, opening. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. But you know, the so, funny thing is, is he got a jacket on with 16, 19. There was the 16, 19 project. You, there was articles in the podcast. Did you did you listen to it at all? I didn't. I think there was six or seven in the series. She did one on economics. The one on economics was literally about how Wall Street is called Wall Street because the first thing that America traded were slaves, like bodies. And they would get, in England, in the UK, slavery was abolished, but you could still trade. The same way if you own a piece of land, you can go to the bank and go, I got no money, but I'll collateralize this land for, you could do it with slaves, right? It was, it was uh, basically black bodies back mortgages. But she did one on music. Country music, it's black genre. It's totally, it became American music, but the banjo, the instrument is from Africa. And then it got appropriated, of course. And now it's funny, now you're sitting here explaining how we're going back into it, but like it was, it's a, it's a podcast that'll blow your mind. Yeah, no, it's, it, I mean, it's it's super weird place to talk about, you know? Yeah, I'm sure. And it's like, I don't, I, I, I'm always the, the one that gets brought into it. It's like, they feel like they gotta, you know, ask me about everything. I mean, the one time, um, I never won like a, a ACM or a CMA award. Like, I never really win any awards unless it's fan voted. Like, AMAs never, never give, I have, you know, two of the biggest songs in country music streaming wise, never got an award for them. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm getting emotional, bro. Yeah. But when uh, all the Black Lives Matter stuff comes up, then I win an award because I have a song called Worldwide Beautiful. Mm. And they're like, that's the most black people I've ever seen on a country music stage. 
was during that time during the Black Lives Matter. And then I win my award. Yes. And I, like when I was accepting that award, it really pissed me off. Mm. Did you say that? I've told it in interviews. Yeah. I didn't say it on stage. Well, you just uh, said it on show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And do other artists, do you have some artists who shun you a little bit too? I've, I read that somewhere too, where like... When I first came in, I felt like people were kind of skeptical, but that was just because I kind of, you know, I broke on social media. I was one of the first ones. Now everything's freaking TikTok. They tell you, if you blow up on TikTok, we'll sign Better you. Better be on TikTok. But uh, <laughs> other than that, the artists are pretty cool. Have you ever wanted to walk away? Did any of that shit get so heavy that you're like, man, fuck this shit, it ain't even worth it? Nah, because I'm, I'm, I mean, like, I love sitting here with people that are competitive. Uh, I'm one of the most competitive people you'll meet. I mean, I'll, I know you'll beat my ass, but I'll challenge you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to do. But, uh, yeah, man, I'm just competitive, so I just want to keep, you know, growing my resume and then eventually, like, hopefully 15, 20 years down the road, I can say I did that. Speaking of competitive, the fight we all want to see. Oh, yes, I was going to ask you this earlier. Ooh, King that Ryan. left hook go. Yeah. King Ryan and Tank Davis. And now, right now, we're chilling. You know, I, I did whatever I had to do to make the fight happen. You know, uh, in my heart, I put everything on the line. You know, went down to the way he wanted, uh, accepted everything. Is he a little he smaller than you? He's smaller than me, but he fought at 140 before. It's just, with me, it's different. You know, yeah. he can't fight me at 140. So he said, come down to 136. And you know, a lot of people, they got ego and they'll say, nah, I ain't gonna do what you say. You know, I'm gonna keep on making millions that I'll just, like I could have, you know, fighting anybody. But I said to myself, nah, everybody wants to see this and I'm not gonna give nobody a chance to get away from it. And that's it. And uh, I'm excited because uh, this is gonna give me the respect I need. Got a lot inside because I've been doing this since I was seven. But they look at me, they, they don't wanna give me that credit. They don't wanna see me as a real fighter. And this is my chance. I'm going to take everything. When you say a real fighter, so what do they see? You? Yeah, you know, social media. Social media, because you, cause you I pop blew up up from it. And, and I'm just an analyst. I'm just a visionary. When I was young, I said, this is going to work. And uh, I'm going to do it. Because I, I knew, I just knew that I had the capabilities of blowing up on it. And then I made it happen. You think you'll beat Tank? I know I'm going to beat him. 100%. Yeah. But I've I seen the same story since I was coming up in the amateurs. You ain't gonna beat him. You don't even, you can't fight. But your style's weird. You awkward, same things. But then when I get in the ring, how, how do I pull it off? And, and to me, it's, I don't listen to nobody. All I do is say to myself, what's the truth? I don't trust anything but the truth. And I know I that when I get in the ring, somehow I figure it out. And why? Because I, I, I've been writing notes in my, in my, you know, on the notepad since I was a little kid. Myself, my dad never told me anything. I would just go in my room and I would break down every position in the ring. And I've been like that since I was a little kid, just a super analyst in my brain. I was just always thinking, thinking, think, thinking. So that's what I feel like separates me. So they say, obviously, styles make fights. Right. right. You know his style. You've seen him fight forever. You obviously know your style. Why do you think your style will work against him? Because if you watched him, he fights sometimes B-level fighters, yet still gets hit and loses rounds. Whenever I fought a B-level fighter, I've knocked him out. I've only had one fight that was tough, and I fought a gold medalist. He never fought a gold medalist. It's an all an illusion, and I'm here to settle it. It's two things that I think that I think is on his side. We've seen him get hurt now. You, we know he can respond we to being hurt. We saw him get hurt. Yes, and, that, and, that, and that's what the old timers used to say. You don't know if you're a champion until you get hurt and see how you react. Did you? You had never been hurt up until then. No, I've never so been. What was that I like? never got dropped. Nothing in my whole career. Um, Tell us what you, was you been not, you been knocked down though. Yeah, the one time, yeah. Uh, how, how was that? It what was, was your, going it was surreal. Mind? So, because I was like, I would never expect that. I'm like, damn, yeah. he just got caught. The the guy was, because I had like, a show me real quick. Come on, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hit me. I, I haven't fought a guy like as tall as me in a long time. So this man was as tall. And when I got, came up on him, I'm like, oh, shit. He's bigger than I thought. Like, his shoulders are wide. I'm like, oh, shit, OK. It's going to be a fight. Yeah. So when I was in there, I was taking to him. I was like, I won the first round pretty easy. And I, at that time, I was knocking everybody out. So I was like, I ain't got nothing to worry about. I'm, I'm about to just keep taking it to him. And then I'm fighting. I'm looking at him. And all of a sudden, I, I don't know, I just lose concentration for a split second. He throws a shot. I'm just like this. And I get hit. I swear, I just seen a, I just seen like white. Damn. The, the moment I, wow. when I got, Whoa. I was already standing up. 
when I came to, I was standing up. I was like, oh shit. I looked at my dad, I said, don't worry. And I just looked at him. Did you ever think she was gonna lose? I respect that. In that moment, are you like, I'm in trouble? No, I say to myself, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to finish the job. Cause I'm right, I'm I write to you. I I wasn't hurt. Like I felt like a little, like a little dizzy, but I said to myself, I've been worse drunk. Let's get it. There we go. And Ryan, I do want to touch on Canelo. Right, you used to be part of his camp. Yeah. You guys had a relationship that seemed like big brother, little brother, right, each other's corner. Yeah. You recently left that camp. What happened there? That was a complicated situation. Um, he said some stuff about me in public that I didn't like, but that I, you know I let things go. I'm not, I forgive people really quick, so I was just like whatever. And I was getting ready for a fight, and a situation happened in the gym. Said I couldn't go at a certain times. I was like, man, I don't need this, you know. You know, I, I've been cool with everybody. I show everybody love. And at a certain point, you just got to go your separate ways. And What did he say about you in public that you didn't like? He said that I'm using mental health basically as an excuse oh. and, and that I'm wasting time and talent when I was really going through stuff. Like, I was What going did you through. go through? Uh, severe anxiety, panic attacks, um, depression. I, 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 was, I was on the verge of killing myself at one point oh, okay. uh, during that moment, so... I got music. Uh, that's why, and I talked to him about it. That's why I didn't understand. I, I, I explained. Oh, you to went him. to him about it. Of course, and I, and he and he acted like he understood. So I was like, all right. So I, I just took it on the chin. It took me time. Uh, self reflection. Therapy. Therapy. A little bit of therapy. Self reflection and just understanding that, you know, sometimes you go through things. It's just like a broken arm. You just don't see it. You know, you just gotta let it heal, and then all of a sudden you come back. Because, you know, a lot of people don't address it and then they act out and they make mistakes. Of course. Because you don't want to settle down and just self-reflect. I say it's like taking two steps back to go five steps forward. Yeah. Because yeah. if I keep pushing it, what's going to happen to me? And at the point, I was at the top. I mean... Yeah. I mean, I was hot at the moment. I just knocked out Luke Campbell. I, I was on top of the world. I was feeling good. I was getting paid. Everything was great. You know, social media was popping. Everything was going great. I was on top. Um... Uh, I just like it was something that I couldn't I couldn't catch a hold of. I was like, what is this? Like, and I I would fight it, and I would just go on my runs. I would train. But all of a sudden, I'll be <gasps> can't breathe. <gasps> you know, my heart's beating out my chest. I'm like, oh my god, what is going on? Uh, and then it just it just blew up, and then I just became you know kind of self sabotaged in my own brain. There's something I found super interesting. I thought of you, Desi. It's like when you went through that, you said you need to take a step back and got off of social media for a little bit. Yeah. You, your career, your platform, your fan base has been built on social media, right? So if you're going through some shit, as we all do in life, can you step away from social? Like, how do you look at that? Uh, I can, but not too long. <laughs> 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 you know, not too long. Yeah. They, they, they say, all right, nigga, shit, bring it back. Yeah, I get it. That's me. Nigga, I was on your ass. Yeah. <laughs> I need to see something. Yeah, we need to see something. Is that okay? Uh, that's cool, but, but I'm just very thankful that Right now, it's not just social media anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing other things now. Yeah. So that gave me the leverage to, you know, to show I could just post a picture sometimes. Yeah. Hey, I'm cool. here. You know what I'm saying? I can, you know, put some stuff in my story. It don't have to be a video. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that gave me like the leverage. Oh, I'm at a show. Come see me live on stage. You know what I'm saying? If you want to laugh. You know, so that I'm just thankful that I I, I took that leap. You some breathing room, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I took that leap. Because I, I, yeah. I had that issue too. I was like, man, I felt like I always had a post. That's the biggest misconception, though. People are like, oh. You, you know, you're not even working on anything. It's like, dude, I'm posting these videos because I know it's going to go viral. Like, I'm not post... Like, people don't want to see angles. They don't want to see... They want to see speed or power. That's it. And, and fun entertainment. That's how I looked at social media. It was a game to me. My little brother actually sent me his, one of his first videos. This was, like, years ago. And I was... This was so long ago before, like... You know what I'm saying? Before you... You've been surgical, but before you had, like, a lot of fights. And I was like, I don't know. Shawty, like, he's gonna be a problem. You know, because you follow boxing, but if you're not following boxing in detail, you might come across something like this. And I had, I had seen, like, people try to throw criticism in the air, but it's like, shit, like, it's social media. Like, what I'm doing on my day-to-day, -day, right, you know what I'm saying? Of you course. can you I control what you see. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. well, by the way, talking about that, you went viral recently watching the slap fight. By the way, no, listen, y'all y'all seen that? Yes, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not boxing. I'm not a fight. big fan of that. He went viral watching it though. I was just watching it. And they was it's what like happened? You, you you got got I just I was commentating. I'm a good commentator. Okay, for, for real. So like, if you have any what you had, what you voiceovers, <laughs> what you say? I had, I had I'm a said, great commentator. Said, this shit right here crazy. This shit, watch this. And I said, oh shit. <laughs> black people commentary, you know how it is. Like but Steph, people. you get hit for real. Would you, you could? Would you do that? Would you ever do this? 
somebody slap the shit on the I gotta go first. <laughs> then he gonna run, ain't nobody catching his ass. I seen somebody face so small yeah, to the match. Now, Man, that guy won. How you came back and won. That's what tripped me out right there. I was like, yo, this uh, ain't right. Yes. Somebody's gonna he get was real getting, hurt. By the way, and this didn't seem like his weight class. It's kind of, the dude was off. way bigger than him. Somebody thicker than His face bigger. was full. His eye was closed. Like his nostril closed. He couldn't even breathe. Yeah, and one. he came back and won. On this one? No, this one. He couldn't breathe. It's like everything just went This one was just. No, I don't want none of that smoke. No. None of that smoke. Have you ever, when you got to the league, did you? what was the first hit when you was like, oh, yeah, this is different than college? Um, Actually, it wasn't even me that got hit, so it was my first year in the league, and it was Adrian Peterson and Cam Chancellor. Like, So we was in the playoffs, actually. This was Minnesota versus uh, the Seahawks. Seahawks, So yeah. Seahawks was still had the Legion of Boom. They still oh, had some yeah, pieces yeah, yeah. in it. They still was spicy. I was a youngin' out there. I was, like, thugging. I'm like, shit, I'm out here, so yeah. I'm supposed to be out there. <laughs> <laughs> I seen them run through the hole. I swear, it's the loudest I ever seen, like, shoulder pass and helmet. Collision. And listen, I'm like, I can't see it. I heard it. you're blocking. Oh, you're here. I'm fake blocking. You know how I mean. <laughs> So I got my hands on somebody, you know what I'm saying? You know, you got a little relationship with the DV. They don't want to tackle. Yeah, they don't want to tackle. You don't want to I'm touching I'm pushing them a little bit. And all I hear is crack. And you ever, like, get frightened by a noise? Of course. And I'm blocking somebody. I hear a crack. I was like, I was like, <laughs> I was like this. Oh, my God. You was like, like, oh, this is different. It was crash course. And then they kind of, like, stalemated. And then they kind of, like, fell, like, to the side. Wow. I was like this. Yeah, this, this, oh, this is what it's all about. Yeah, right? this is real. You know, they can't really hit us no more. You can't really you hit can't, a receiver. No. And it's it's really, I mean, I look at it as in, look, you hit me, you're losing money. How many yes. people want to lose money? Yes. So I run over there with a lot of concern, like, <laughs> there you hit me. <laughs> <laughs> there you. Please, hey, look at you like, hit me. Hey, I, can point hey, ass, I can point your ass out. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah, they can't really, so y'all, that's funny, because they, they won't offense the league, so you consciously know that as a receiver. You know it. Because you they can't know get it. a defensive receiver, can I get hit? Mm -mm. And, and older guys, you know, they don't respect that because back in the day, like, everybody was hard and was hitting. Yeah. And I'm like, this, I understand, but like, I'm just in a different time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate my time. You know what I'm saying? If it was back then, I would be what y'all was on. And y'all probably was a little off. Who, 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 the best DB, who the best DB you don't win again? Um, it's crazy because when I was a youngin', like, my first year, I took all my lumps. Like, by that, I mean I took all my L's, like, from the best guys, like, because I went against, uh, I went against Richard Sherman as a, as a rookie. I went against Patrick Peterson as a rookie. I went against Sam Shields. He was in Green Bay. Uh, I saw a lot of guys, and on the schedule, it kind of taught me that shit. As a youngin', you'll take your lumps, you know what I'm saying? You'll learn from them, but you got to take your lumps. And those are Hall of Fame guys. Everybody I named damn near a Hall yeah, of, of Fame course, player. Or, or going to Ken at one point, so I feel like I learned so much about myself. Like, if you're a real competitor, you can take a loss, you know what I'm saying? Like, for example, like, getting knocked down. Like, you took that moment and kind of, like, created, like, shit, like, man. It's motivation. Yeah, like, I'm on to the next. I'm back Let's in the ring bumping. Like, to it. me, I took those lumps. I said, all right. I learned myself. I got back in the lab in the off season. I said, I promise you this next year I got something for y'all ass. I jumped out the fan hot. Like I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be ready when it's doing the whistle blow. You was ready to get out of Minnesota? Yeah, that's I can tell you, like, that was probably one of my most um my darkest times, like my real dark times. Like people don't really understand what's like. the whole time in Minnesota no, or that I last was, like year? towards like the end of my last two years because like you don't know what it's like to go into a hostile environment or go to work and not feel comfortable, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not, feel, not feel like it's a safe haven, not feel like it's just a workspace. So for me, wanting to get out of there, it was bigger than just a situation. And it just, I kind of experienced a little bit of that this year as far as like going in a dark place a little bit just because I had some PTSD, you know what I'm saying? Like in Minnesota, it was just like... What was it in Minnesota that took you, took you there? I just, I felt like I had potential and I didn't want to be an unsung hero. Like, I didn't want to be second fiddle to nobody. I felt like I believed in myself enough that I could, you know what I'm saying, lead a team. And you felt like you were second fiddle to Adam? Yeah. Or you felt like he was the number one? And yeah, you... that's, what, that's how I was slated. It was like they treated me like a number one, but then at times it kind of like they played me small. So it was kind of like a little bit of a mind game as well, like being young and just being there. And I felt like uh, it was such, it was a moment of like, of rejoice because I was like this, damn, I need to take my own life into my own hands. Like, and it was rolling the dice. Like, this ain't boxing. I'm not just by myself. Like, this a whole team. Like, this shit could go sour real quick. So when I wanted to get out of there, I was like, you know, when I tweeted, I was like, I, need, I think it's time for a new beginning. That was me betting on myself. And it's odd. People don't but even know What was you and Adam's relationship like? Great. That's my bro. Like, I, I ain't you no know, hater. Like, you know what I'm saying? I love bro to death. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love seeing him have success. But I just knew for me, I just wasn't going for it. Like, I'm like, listen. 
I love what y'all got going on, but it ain't necessarily the best situation for me. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, teams yeah. always look out for the best interests of themselves. And I never wanted to rub anybody the wrong way because my reputation was to, I worked hard. You know what I'm saying? I kept my nose clean. I did what I was supposed to do. So when the rumors came out that I was a diva or I was this like that, I was like, man, that's water off my back. I don't care. I know what I bring to the table. and I know what type of man I am. In any profession, all you want to do is reach your full potential. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And if you're not reaching your full potential because of, not because of you, that's a problem. You have more. Crazy. You have it, it's a battle within yourself. You have more questions than you have answers. You know what I'm saying? And for me, I just I can't navigate in that world. I gotta know because I know for a fact that when they whistle blow, I'm gonna be ready. You know what I'm saying? For me, it's always about the bigger picture. You know what I'm saying? What I want for myself, what I want for my family, I would never. I'm not compromising that. I can't compromise that because I'm gonna have to answer it to myself. When you look in the mirror like this, could you have changed it? Yeah, but and. Y'all team is so fucking good. What you think y'all missing in Buffalo to get y'all over there? It doesn't make sense. Like, I will wreck my brain with this shit at this point because my first year I got there, um, we went to the AFC Championship. So if you really look at the grand scheme of things, like Minnesota sent me to Buffalo not, uh, it, not to have a, the career that I've been having. No. You know what I'm saying? You think, when people think of Buffalo, for example, you know, remember A.B. Oman got traded to Buffalo? Totally. He, he was like, that's fake news. No, he really did get traded. He just yeah. was like, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't going. Going. Oh, shit. <laughs> So for me, uh, I felt like they sent me there for like, you know what I'm saying, for shit not to go well, in my opinion. To die, basically. Yeah, it's in like my you're opinion. Going to die. Yeah, your career died. You know what I'm saying? Things end up going, we went to the AFC Championship. Dang. The next year we lose by what, 13 seconds? You know what I'm saying? Little shit like this is yeah. like... This was your third year in Buffalo? This is my past third year. And then this year we lose... Who's y'all losing in the first AFC Championship? KC. KC. And what are you missing to get over the hump in your Are you missing anything? Is it more execution? Like, what do you think? I think it's more execution than anything. Shit is small little pieces on why shit is not going right. And I'm like this. You can wreck your brain. Like, we got the players. We got the plays. Why shit ain't coming together? And I'm like, that's when you draw so much question. And I never want to question, like who I am. I never want to question how I am. I'm giving this shit everything I got. I'm dying on the hill of that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, and to you, you're the best in the world? I see you, 100%. I never, if people like, you can debate it like. I think it's th it's three that are, I, I love JJ and I think he's amazing, it's too early. And Chase. Yeah, they, they, they sure. You, Devontae. I'm about to say, you gotta throw Tay in there. Tay's yeah. fit work is this. Yeah, Tay. I love Tay, that's my man. You, Tay. I I heard I I seem to agree. Tyreek is not a natural catcher, mm -hmm. but he's a he's one of the best in the league. But he's not like a hand like you and Tay. Y'all catch? Did he more of a body catcher? Yeah, but I know like I think somebody argue with like Tyreek Hill not being that. Listen, let me explain something to y'all. I just can't stress this enough. He's the fastest person in the league. He by far, right? I went to a practice and. Um, on the sideline, the coach was telling him like he needed to slow down because he was moving so fast. Yeah, like, he was monitoring he his speed. On he wanted them. He wanted them. He wanted them. He, wanted them. Yeah, he definitely. He one of the greatest athletes I've ever seen. That's what I'm saying. Like, who, you ever seen him hoop? And he nah, hoop. Lefty go dunk. Just windmills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just hooping in Vegas. We just hooping in Vegas. You just hooping at the Pro Bowl? Yeah, yeah. We had like a little celebrity game. You can't hoop. I know you can't. You can box. You can't hoop. Sorry. Sorry. I don't give you all the time. Like I said, just see me. I'm, I'm good. You ain't rolling. I can't see you. Just don't I'm leave me open. I, shit. I don't look like you, you any, look like a hooper. I don't look like a hooper. Like like Why? Because I got the curry going on. <laughs> I can hoop, bro. You can't hoop for shit. I can't. I can. I can. He hey, stop, stop, hey, stop real quick. <laughs> he, he, just, he, he just came up, he just talked about this earlier. He said, believe. <laughs> so when I'm on that court, you believe. I'm believing. Let's be realistic. I'll, it Let's is going to look good. Though. It's going to look Let's good. Be realistic, Let's be realistic, though. Let's tell the truth. I can really hoop, though. Like, if I, like, you hooped high school. Like, yeah, but if I like really put this football shit down and then say, like, that's dedicate my life to it. Oh, you, you, you going to hoop? Damn. Yeah, like, I can really do that. Oh, you, you can go to the NBA. 100%. I could do, I could average at least 10. I don't know about that. Cap, bro. He cap, he fucking with us. I got, I got a text message on my phone from Jimmy Butler saying I can hoop. That's all I'm gonna That say. is not a stamp, though. That is a stamp. That's a stamp, Steph, That's a stamp. It is a stamp. Like, I'm hating. I love Jimmy I'm Butler. I'm hating right now. Because I get a stamp. So you hoop all the time? Yes, yeah, so I put an NBA court in my house. During COVID, I put like a big ass workshop. And so I got like a gym and a basketball court, golf simulator. Oh, and shit. And all that stuff in my house. So I never had house? came over to your house studio. during COVID. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure like, with you. AK, come you on. You cut records right there, too? Yeah. You write with a team or you write by yourself? Uh, they, bunch of different writers come in and out, but I usually have like my favorites. Uh, you always write in the studio or you write in the car? How you do it? The studio. By the way, y'all yeah. know how he got started? How's it? Somebody heard you singing. Didn't you, weren't you working? How's I was it? working at Lowe's, I was singing in the paint department. Somebody heard him saying, how crazy. You lying. Yeah, you yeah. was by the Sherman Williams? <laughs> I, yeah, well, I was mixing. Yeah, I know how it goes. And what, yeah. you was just singing? 
Yeah, it was one of my boys that was uh that went to high school with me. He's like, I gave him cold chills, so he was like, do the talent show. So I did the talent show, and I got a standing ovation. So I did another song, and then I uh, went on like American Idol and X Factor and The Voice. Oh what? You was on X Factor? Yeah, I made X Factor, and they tried to put me in a boy band. Yeah. And, <laughs> and some some told some told me don't do it. Like I followed my heart, and I just I just said no, and then. Uh, uh, a couple years later, I have my own record label when I ended up signing that band that they tried to put wow. me in. Really? What's uh, that name? But wait, but wait, Restless no, 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 wait, wait. You can't skip it. This is a very important question. Did you ask, actually like the boy band or you just did it to make it, to, like, this thing full No, circuit? because they're both great. They're all great guys. And the lead singer at the time, his name was Colton, he's in the band now. He was like the center of attention of everybody that was trying out, that everybody that made it. He was the center of the circle. Like, I hated him. Oh. I tell him today, like, I was like, I hated you, dude. That's like that's like going back to buy the restaurant you used to work at just to close it down. Respect that. Yeah. I like that flex. I respect that. So, Ken, if I heard you correctly, you have a record label. Mm -hmm. You're signing acts, always looking for great talent. Desi, one thing I, I feel you don't get enough credit for, you got bars. You got some bars. Hey, man. Were you in the studio? I'll I, I be in the I... studio, bro. I got a whole song out with Boosie Man at right now. What was it called? It's out right now? Right now, it's been on iTunes for like a year. Play it really? real quick. Oh, or just you spit, wrote it just yourself? Spit it. Just spit it. We oh, no, nah, it's going to come right we, now. We, we, it, won't, <laughs> it won't be too long at all. <laughs> you got it? Right here. Let's do it. You got no minute? Put on your mic. Stupid! Oh, no. Stupid! You go crazy! Y'all didn't want me to do it, right? Fuck! This is the worst song I ever heard. Yo, yo, ayo. Bro, that shit a win. Is this really all? This ain't serious. What the fuck is you doing? Running up in your shit, nigga. I promise you, you're black. I don't give a fuck. I'm about my cash. Hell no. I'm about my motherfucking... You can't hoop, nigga. You say what? You can't hoop, bro. No, you can't hoop, bro. I'm looking at you. That don't see, they ain't see. They, they're sponsored. They be looking at people thinking they, <laughs> and they get in the ring and they pop out and they got knocked out. <laughs> then they did. <laughs> 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 Pulling up in this motherfucker, turn your down, young nigga. We ain't playing game.